everybody. Welcome to a little extra watercolor video for this month for October. Um, we finished our landscape and so I thought we would do a little series of herbs. Um, just, to, just to try some techniques. Um, we're going to do basil, rosemary, parsley, and sage and sort of simplify them um, so, you, so you can learn how to paint these beautiful herbs. And once you learn the simplified version, of course, you can always add more detail if you want to. But these would make really sweet little gift tags or note cards, um, things like that, especially for people in your life who love to cook or garden. Um, yeah, so I've got here some cold press watercolor paper. And we're going to make the most of the texture, you know, by using cold press paper. And I actually want to lift this up a little bit. See a little bit more. Okay. Um, I've got my reference image, which you all have as well. I will probably not have this in view unless I need to point something out specifically. So you can just follow along on your own copy. And then I've just got a basic, my basic palette of paints, like always. Um, I'll go over the colors. I've got <clears throat> a cool yellow, a warm yellow. Uh, two cool reds, one that's more magenta, one that's darker. So this is perm rose, and this is permanent alizarin crimson. I've got a raw sienna, burnt sienna, viridian, Davies gray, French ultramarines, uh, Prussian blue, so a warm blue and a cool blue, a violet, and a brown sepia. Okay, um, and for this, we're mostly going to be using the viridian and the blues and the yellows, obviously. Maybe a little bit of the alizarin or or that for the sage, because it has that greenish cast to it. So we're gonna start by, um, let's start with the basil. And uh, let me get my, where is my, my trusty pencil? All right, so we're gonna start with the basil. And if you've ever grown basil, you know that it grows in alternate leaflets, right? So <clears throat> I can start basil by seriously just drawing and I'm gonna kind of do it off to the side a little bit. So I can draw one little triangle, a line, and another little leaf-like triangle. Like so, a leaf shape, right? Tiny. And then on either side of that, I can draw a line. And you can let it curve a little bit or be straight. It doesn't matter, right? And that's the center vein of our, of our next leaflets. And so from there, <clears throat> I notice that there are some veins that really go up like this, okay? And then here, all right? So that sort of gives us the idea of the shape of the leaf. And then I can start down here. You can give a couple little things like that, but it really just comes to a soft point and then back down, okay? We don't need to get too crazy with this. So for this one, we'll come out maybe a couple points where the leaf veins end, comes to a soft point. All right, like that. And then we'll do two more, <clears throat> all right? So from, from this one, is gonna come out a, a bigger leaf. So we'll make our line a little bit longer. Okay, and if making them curve a little bit just makes your, your drawing not look so stiff, right? And then on these, you see those, those big veins again. So I'm just gonna draw somewhere I see them. Okay big oval leaf shape all right and then the same thing down here so I'm just I'm just from the center vein I'm just drawing out some little veins right and they basal veins like really curve sort of like trillium veins you know same thing they really have that deep curve and I don't even need to put much but it doesn't have to be perfect either right it can just kind of follow along like that so really, that's all we need. We could add another layer if you wanted to, all right? But we're gonna stick with this, okay? So I'm gonna draw them all at first, and then we'll, we'll paint them as we go. 
So for the say for the rosemary, I'll do that one down here. I'm gonna start with just a line, okay? It's sort of in the shape of the line that I see the sprig, all right? And then I see that it's got a sprig that comes up this way. It got it has one that comes up this way. This way, we'll just put a few little sprigs up here like that, okay? And then we're gonna paint these leaves right onto the sprig. We don't need to draw each leaf. We just don't need to do it. But now we just have the basic shape and gesture, all right? And we, we're gonna have leaves that come off the top here like this, okay? So that's our rosemary. Um, and then let's draw the sage. Sage is a little bit trickier. We're gonna focus on these in here, all right, and pretend like these don't exist. My my stock photo um, subscription didn't really have any good pictures of sage. So, so I'm gonna start by drawing a line that I see here. So I see this, this leaf that comes down here, so it comes up, all right? like that, just a little line. And then next to it is another one. It comes and it comes out this way. So right next to it, I'm gonna paint one. It comes out like this. And then the same over here. It's just, it's just the pattern of growth, right, of sage. Then <clears throat> there's another one that sort of comes up here. Here's the center vein. And then right behind it, we've got one that comes up, okay? So I'm just drawing the stems and the center veins. So now, here's the stem down here, and it'll all come together on the stem. I am just going to draw the leaf shape, and it kind of comes like this and down, all right? And then there's this little lip here where the leaf curls, okay? This one, here's my stem. All right, we'll just pretend like this leaf starts down here. It kind of comes behind this one, arches up, and then comes back down this way. And maybe there's a little bit that comes there down to the stem. Okay, so it's just a long, narrow leaf. And, and here is our center vein. All right, and we don't even need to worry, but there might be a few coming out this way, but we're not going to worry about that. You can put a couple in if you want. All right. Then this one behind, <clears throat> just draw on either side. So there's our, our one back here. You can put a few veins if you want to, all right? And then the one behind here, let's do this one first. So this one comes down for a stem. This is the center vein, remember? So we'll start here with the side of the leaf, come up, kind of comes to a point, and then rounds down this way. Um, okay, and then you could put a few of the side veins. Keep it as simple as possible, all right? And then this one in back, we're just going to bring it up like this, and we know that they come to a soft point, and then down. Actually, we'll, we'll make it come a little bit farther over. All right, and then you can just put in a few of those little veins if you want to, but you really don't have to. Okay? All right, and then our last one is parsley. And again, we have a simple stem. It goes this way first, and then this way, all right? And then from here, it's got these little leaflets, right? And so we're not gonna worry about painting those. Um, but we're just going to paint, just going to draw the stems. All right, and then this one goes into three. So just draw the stems that you see. We'll paint the leaves really with just tiny little brush strokes. All right, keep it as simple as possible. All right, so there's our drawing, all right? And we can, we can lighten our drawing if you want to, like as you paint them. So let's paint the basil first. So I'll just lightly lift some of that graphite so it's not so strong. 
okay? And we're going to mix up some basil color. So let me move this. I am just going to use a dirty palette. Whatever you got, as long as it's not crazy, but I don't need to get a clean palette. And let's mix up some green like this. So I'll just lift up some of this. Reds on the palette always make greens better, and this is so faint that it's it's really not going to matter. All right, so I'm going to start um, with my cool blue, which is a Prussian blue. And I'm going to put quite a bit on my palette. All right. And I'm gonna go into the cool yellow. So cool blue and cool yellow. Cool yellow is like a lemon, right? And a little bit more. I made an apple cake this morning and my house smells so good right now. It's hard not to eat it. To wait for tea time but it's a really healthy one there's no sugar in it and um, it's made with almonds almond flour and oat flour ground up almonds and ground up oats so it's really very good for you all right so that's a really good basil color isn't it i like this so i've made i've tried to match this as close as possible basil is that really it's a real true vibrant green but then I also want to have a little bit of a darker one. All right, so um, I'm going to take a little bit of cool blue right to the side. All right. Also cool, ye cool yellow to make our green. We don't have to get as light as that one. And then I'm going to add some burnt sienna, just a little bit to my green to make a darker green. And I need a little bit more even. All right, so just a little bit of dark green to pull from. All right, okay. So let's paint our basil. I'm gonna put my reference up here in front of me so you can see my paper. All right, we're gonna start. We, st we see our, our lines, okay? These veins are dark. They're not light, so we don't have to worry about that. We can paint the veins later. So I'm gonna pick up some of my wonderful lighter green and I'm gonna paint the leaf. And I want a nice coat of this beautiful green, mindful of my edges and where things join, where the leaf, where the leaf stem joins the rest. I wanna make sure that I, I put that in there. And remember, this is cold pressed paper, so your edges won't be as perfect as if you use hot pressed paper. But you can get them pretty good if you take your time. Bring them in there. All right, and then I'm gonna take my a little bit of my darker color, all right, and I'm going to drop it in Drop it in towards the bottom where it goes in and maybe a little bit on the edge just to give it some variation maybe a little bit down where those veins are we'll paint the veins when it dries just to give it a little bit of variation of color all right and then we've got those teeny little leaves in there we can just paint those with our lighter color and those will just be one color Okay, and then <clears throat> paint these little guys. And remember, these are supposed to be little, like, just dainty little pictures that might even be a little bit um, dropping in some dark just to make some variation, usually toward where it meets the center and then along one side. All right, just so there's a little variation in the color. I'm going to move to this one. 
paint around those little leaflets so you, you're leaving a tiny little bit of light there where they join and keep your paint nice and fluid not too thick right you want to see that paper you want to see your pencil lines pick up some of your darker color Put some down here where maybe it comes in and maybe a little bit on the side just a little bit just it just gives it a little bit of variation right this first one I'm actually gonna do it over I'm just gonna paint another layer on because my brush was too wet there I need a little bit more of my dark All right, and then one more. Remember, whenever it goes next to something else, just leave the tiniest sliver of light. Okay, a little bit of my darker color for down here, and maybe along one side, just to give it some variation. All right, so there's our basil leaves. And we'll put our, um, what do you call it, our lines in in a little bit. So we're keeping this really simple, really, really simple. If you wanted to put shadows, um, you could, but I think really the simpler the better with these, all right? Very pretty. What you could do is you could take a little bit of your cool yellow on its own and maybe um, in one that's still a little bit wet, just drop in and make a little halo of cool yellow you could do something like that or just to give it a little more variation right but I honestly think just keeping it green is good these are meant to be just simple all right we'll go to the rosemary now and we're, we're going to use a little bit of a different green so I'm going to add actually to this I'm just going to keep mixing on these greens I'm going to add some warm blue, some French ultramarine, all right? And rosemary has a little bit of a cooler feel to it than basil. All right, so I've got my, my um, so that, I know that sounds funny, but it, it, it actually means it's more toward the green side. Um, and we need to, and it's a little bit more natural. So we need to use French ultramarine, which is a more natural blue. And I'm actually going to use some warm yellow to mix in there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this. Um, so take a little bit of this over. And I'm going to mix some red into it. So some cool red and just sort of gray out this green and make it sort of sagey. Okay, so I've got a few greens here on my palette to choose from. All right, so for the rosemary, we're gonna start at the top and I'll start with my, um, with it, you can, so you're gonna switch the greens around, right? So we're gonna start at the top and we're gonna paint a little rosemary leaf shape, all right? And then I'll paint another one right next to it and we're always sort of moving down toward that stem, okay? Maybe a, a one that's a little bit darker and a little bit thinner, all right? And I just paint my stem as I go, okay? And maybe there's one that kind of comes out this way. So look at your reference and sort of mimic the shapes of the leaves. We don't, and, and it's really, um, it's really jumbled, and sometimes they go right over each other, you know, so I'm just switching up the colors here and there, 
and just painting one over the other. And so you'll get a little bit of variation just by doing that. Here's one that comes way up here, right? Maybe this one comes out this way and just go right over it. Some are thinner, some are thicker, some are darker, some are lighter. And don't worry so much, just truly just paint one over the other. And then maybe some lighter ones like right here coming out this way. smaller ones and they come off the end of those stems and they sort of just kind of grow up next to each other they, they really go straight up right Maybe one's just straight like that Make sure you go in all, you know, in all directions, just like you see, okay? Go back to some lighter color. I'm going to put a little bit more red in there. Just to change it a little bit more for a couple of these. You'll see. Um, now and then like you can take one and leave the center of it open like here like paint a leaf and leave the center open just to give it a little bit of a highlight kind of here's a big flat one just leave a tiny sliver of it open if you want to sometimes Okay. Keep going. Make it nice and full. Really fun. And then this one over here, um, You'll get the hang of it and it'll get easier and easier, right? And you'll get a sort of a, a rosemary rhythm. And then just always make sure to, um, to connect those stems if you need to. All right, so there's our rosemary. Very simple. And we probably won't do too much more to this. Maybe add a little bit of dark to it. Now the sage is a really unusual color. All right. So if you just start with your palette, whatever's here on your palette, all right, um, what does it need? It, and when I look at my reference, it needs more red, right? So I'm going to add a little bit of cool red to it and see where it takes me. And then I think a little bit of cool blue. 
and I'm coming into that sagey green. See? Another really easy way to make sagey green is to take Viridian and add Burnt Sienna. And you get that kind of sagey green. Get a little more Viridian. So when you when you mass it out a little bit, you're gonna have to put more water in it. But that's an easy way to get that sort of green. But this is really what I'm looking for right now, right? And this is an interesting plant because so, so the veins that we see are light and dark, but it has a lot, a lot of texture, right? And the edges of the leaves are like little tiny crimps. <laughs> so let's um let's lighten up our lines. And to make this simple is tricky, right? This is a, a tricky leaf to make simple, but we're gonna do our best. Just lifting up some of that graphite anyways. Okay. So I'm gonna take some of my sagey green, the silvery, silvery, beautiful silvery green, and I'm gonna start with the leaf and back and just get a good coat of this color on the leaf. And like I said, you don't need to worry. Um, when you get to these down here, remember, just leave a little space. Tiny bit of space between. Between the separate parts. So you see that beautiful sagey green color. And once I get this in, um, you can even leave a little white of the paper showing if you want to, okay? I'm gonna rinse my brush, dry it off, and I can take the tip of my brush and just run it through a couple times. Just sort of run it through like in the direction of form, like the direction that the veins go. Might be a little bit too wet still. Give it a second, but just to run it through a little bit. And then I want you to take your brush with just the tiniest bit of paint and I want you to go around the outside edges and just do little dots all the way around the edges just to show just really into the leaf but on the edge just to show that it has a texture right just a little bit it's like on the leaf but just comes off of it a tiny bit there all right it's going to show a little bit of texture that way then so you can you can dry your brush off even more and you can as it dries, just pull through, pull through a few times, just to show a little bit of, of variation. And then you can take your brush and just go like this, little tiny dots all over. And just in part, like maybe just on the upper, upper and then down, um, down the one side to give it a little bit of a modeled appearance. Right, and that's all we're gonna do do for that for now. Then we're gonna go to the next one, and I'm gonna paint. Um, I'm gonna paint this one here. So we're gonna leave. We're gonna paint the one side of the underside of this leaf. Okay, and then we'll pull down a stem. All right, and then we're gonna use water. So I just painted the one side where the vein is on the right side. And then I'm just using a damp brush to pull that color on the other side. All right, and leaving a little bit of white in the center. And then I'm gonna just take a little bit and put it on the upper edge, okay? And then use water to sort of fill in the other part. See what I did? All right, pick up more of our sagey green. 
and we're going to go to this leaf now. Paint the upper side, which is darker. The upper side on the top of the vein is darkest, right? So we're going to paint that first. Come here, make, make a berth around that. Go down the vein, go down the stem. Okay, paint this side. Take your brush, wet it a little bit, and then pull the color down with just water. So it's lighter on this side. Okay, and then we can take a little bit more paint and then just on this outer edge, fill in with a little bit of darker paint. So if you look at your reference, you'll see that it's a little bit darker on that edge, but up here it's, a, it's lighter in the center. And then we can just pull it up here a little bit. All right, dry our brush off, take the tip of our brush, and just kind of go around the edges a little bit to give it some of that texture. Okay, and then you could take the tip of your brush and again, just put some little tiny dots with the tip of your brush into the darker part of the paint. And this brush is dry, it's not wet. If it was wet, you'd get stars. This might've been a little too wet. This one's better. So it's dried off, okay? And it just, it just enhances the, the texture, all right? And we're gonna come back and put veins on these. All right, then I can go um, to this leaf over here, same exact thing, and notice that the upper side of the leaf is darker than the lower side. So we're gonna paint the upper side first, leaving a little bit of room between the other leaves. So on top of the vein, we're gonna paint. Get some water on your brush and pull the paint down for the bottom part. So it's a lighter version of what's up top. Okay, get a little bit more on your brush and notice that this edge, the edge is a little bit darker. So I can just run a little bit more paint around the edge and that will still leave that light area inside. Okay, um, same thing with the tip of your brush. Go around and just, whoop. Sorry, dry your brush really well. <laughs> and then go around the edge and just sort of pico that edge. Just if You're not really doing much, but it does just give it a little bit of a texture. Okay? All right. And then we'll do the middle leaf, which is all dark. It's really all dark. But we're going to leave that outer edge without paint. We're just going to paint the inside of it. Because if you notice, it gets a little lighter on the outside. So we're just painting that inside around this other leaf carefully. Rinse our brush, dry it off really well, and then just pull your brush around that edge and that will just give you a lighter edge. Okay, so that's it for now for the stage. <clears throat> Take the tip of your dry brush and just, you can make some little dots in here. There. All right. Now the parsley. So the parsley is that is that basil green, right? So we can go back to that. <clears throat> Get some Prussian blue, cool, cool blue. So phthalo or Prussian, something like that. But the blue that leans toward turquoise, right? And then some cool lemony yellow and get ourselves a nice parsley green. Actually, we'll put some lemon yellow and some warm yellow, both. Get that parsley green, okay? And we want a little bit of it to be darker, so as always. So I just like section off a little bit and I'm gonna add in some, um, a little bit of burnt sienna just to make a darker version of it. Need a little bit more blue. Okay, two greens. So this one we're really using the tip of our brush. So we're gonna get 
paint on our brush. And we're really using the tip of our brush to just paint these little leaves. And I'm gonna start at the top, a little bit high, and I'm using the tip, I go deep, deep, just like these little things, right? Deet, deet, deet. And then I kind of gather them together and paint the inside. Okay. There's another one that comes up this way. It's really small. So I just kind of go deet, 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 deet. Gather it together, paint the inside. And then always paint the stem. All right. Same thing here. I'm just kind of using the tip of my brush to make these little feathery, pointy edges of the parsley. And then gathering them all together with paint in the center and pulling it down. So they're going to look feathery and a little bit pointy. You can fill them in, you know, a little bit more if you need to. All right, there's one over here. So I'm going to start with a little point on top. And I see I'm kind of going down the sides. And this one comes way out. And then I just fill them in with paint. And pull that stem down. Okay. This one's a little bit on its side, so I'll just kind of paint it the way I see it. Okay, then always pull that stem. Paint the stem down to here, and then we've got a few leaves here. So we'll start with this one up top. We've got one up here. And just kind of look at how the outer edge of the leaf is and the shape of it. Okay. And then this one comes right on top of it and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna paint it right on top. And then this one kind of comes out this way. There's a big piece and then there's some little ones. And then pull those stems down. Okay. So we're sort of making, um, it's just, it's the suggestion of the shape of parsley. The color is really good too. Now we'll do these. So this one kind of comes way out. It's got a few little doodads on either side. And then it's got some teeth on this side and a few over here and then fill it in. And this one kind of comes this way. And then this one got that make sure your stems go and then just fill in with the little shapes that you see it's pretty random and you can get a real piece of parsley and look at it you don't have to look at this reference it's all going to be about the same Okay, it just helps to see the direction that they grow, kind of the general shape of them. They come in and they all meet the lovely stem. Okay. All right, so let's go back to our basil. We're gonna use our dark green. Pick up some dark green. So however you made dark green, usually your green plus burnt sienna or some alizarin crimson. And I'm gonna take my, um, I'm gonna outline these two little ones just a little bit, just so they have some chops there. And then I'm gonna use this just to paint these. So the pencil lines that I put in that sort of mimicked the veins. 
that's what I do with the darker color. Okay, one more. Now you could also, um, if you wanted to, you could put some shadow. So like where this leaf um, goes on top of that one, you could add a little bit of darkness there, right? You could add some shading to the leaves and stuff if you wanted to. But quite honestly, you know, if you want to keep it simple, I would just let it be, all right? But there's, you can always do that. Never forget that you can go in and I could, I could make shading on this if I wanted to take it a little farther. Wherever I see dark, I could put some dark paint, rinse my brush, dry it off, and soften it in. Okay, you can do that if you want to. So there's our basil. And it, it, sometimes it's nice just to take a little green on any plant and where it comes down and meets the stem, you can, you can make that area a little bit darker. And then really just rinse your brush, get some clean water and just soften it. And remember, these are totally dry before I, before, you, you know, just make sure, mine were dry, so just make sure that they're dry before you start to go on with a second layer of anything, whether it's veins or shading. Okay? All right, so the rosemary, we really don't need to do too much, but we can take a little bit of our darker green, all right? And then every now and then, when things sort of overlap, like this one might be down underneath, so when we see one that's sort of underneath everything, we could make that one a little darker. See how I did that? So every now and then, don't do too many. Like this one, we could paint a little darker. See, it just gives it, it gives it a little bit more dimension to do that. Every now and then, pick one of the little leaves and just paint it a bit darker. Be on top, underneath. I don't think it really matters, to be honest with you. But you can follow and give it that illusion, right? This one's underneath that one. Let me put another one because I messed up. Okay, so kind of fun. Give it a little bit more here and there. All right, there's our rosemary. Now for the sage, we're gonna stick to um, that silvery green that we made and just pick more of that up on our brush and, and go in and where you see some of these little veins that we plopped in, we can just add a few lines. You don't need to do too many, just a few to suggest. And make sure you're looking at your reference to see the direction that the lines are going, right? That, that really makes a difference. Here, this one, I want to put a line down one side and maybe just some there and then just emphasize that curly edge. And I, when I say just a few, I really, I really mean just a few. Okay, and then you can take a little bit more of it and just come down here and 
emphasize that stem a little bit. Get your brush wet, get some more of the paint, okay? And we can emphasize a little bit of the dark, the darker area. So I've got like a glaze of this color and I can just sort of go over areas that are a bit darker, okay? Like down in here, a little bit more. So you rinse your brush when you do that and they just soften, just soften it in. And it's just emphasizing where things are a little darker, like behind this leaf in here. You can make it a little darker where they go, like where things tuck in. Okay, didn't even need to soften that one. And then on this side, a little darker up on that side and on this edge okay so you can even go a little bit darker over here where things come together there I really like it and you can add a little bit of dimension to things. Okay? And that just the pinprick of a wet brush in there gives it a teeny bit of texture, like sage has. And then for the parsley, go with the dark green again. And then every now and then on the stem, make it a little bit darker, you know, like especially where it comes together and then maybe along one side where they join up here, where things join. Just make it a little bit darker, all right? And then you can go in and very lightly with the tip of your brush, add in some darker green where you see darker green on your reference or on your real parsley leaves, okay? So um, it's usually gonna be on one side of the leaf and just pay attention to where that is, all right? And it does, it does make a difference. And then this is in front, so I'm just gonna like show the shape of that. I can make this leaf in back a little bit darker, and that just enhances the shape of that leaf. This one gets a little darker down here. See? So just look at your reference and darken it's just so much easier to go back in and darken than try to do it on these teeny things the first time around. It gives it a little bit more dimension. Obviously you can do many more parsley sprigs than that, but we're just keeping it simple for today. All right. Now, if you do want to put a little bit of a blush on your sage, you could take some really diluted alizarin crimson, really, really diluted on a somewhat dry brush. Okay, so you're not gonna have a super, super wet brush. And maybe on a couple of the leaves, you can just paint a glazed layer of that. Just, just sort of brush it on top. And that just gives it that rosy hue. See, I'm just lightly putting that on in a few places. You don't have to, but Sometimes it has that kind of blush to it and it might be kind of fun just to liven it up a little bit. All right, I hope this is helpful. I hope it was fun. Super, super simple. A place to start, a place to begin. And then if you really enjoy doing this, just showing you how to do different leaf shapes and things, how to approach things. If you really enjoy doing it, then you could um, take it further and add more detail, right? And do more. Um, I still wanna make this darker. So you can always make things a little darker. You don't wanna to go too dark initially, but by making this a little darker, it really makes that leaf pop. And then I can just soften that in. Okay, let's see if I need any more. I think just a little bit in here. 
as it comes down to here. Rinse my brush, dry it off, soften. And then you can always start adding more detail, right? And get a little bit, a little bit more going on on these darker edges and things like that. But sometimes simple is best to begin. There, I love them. All right, everybody, thanks so much. And uh, one other thing, if you wanted to, you could lift highlights on your basil. Um, so you can take a damp brush and just sort of lift some of these colors and then dab it with the tissue. And of course, I don't have a tissue with me. But if you just take your brush and just very damp, not wet, and just go like this a little bit in a few of the highlight places, and if you used a tissue, it would lift up just enough to give it a highlight if you wanted to do that in a couple places, like, like here, like you could lift up a little bit in there. I don't have a tissue, but you, you know what I'm talking about. You just dab it with the tissue, not a, not a wet brush, but it's just a very, very damp brush. I mean like dried off wet, you know, it's wet and then you dry it off and then you can do that and you can lift off a little bit at the end. All right, that's it. I will see you Friday um, with another with another video. All right, everybody, take care, and I will see you very soon. Thanks.